depending on when this show is set, this is a very, very good theory that this could be Matt Decker we're looking at. That aged well, didn't it? We've had some news since our last news video about the news that came out yesterday. News. Um, oh, let's, let's, let's get into it. I'm Sean Ferrick for Trek Culture and I guess we're getting Kirk. Anyone who's been paying attention to the internet for the last 24 hours will know that yesterday there was a couple of TikToks from the users Saeed and Aziz Yavash. That is an amazing username. They both shared information via several uh, uh, Twitter accounts as well that Paul Wesley of the Vampire Diaries fame was filming for Star Trek Strange New Worlds. Now we know from production timelines it was for season two and we did a whole big news video about who it could possibly be. The forerunner being Matt Decker because none of us thought it was going to be a certain character. Now I'm addressing this one directly to the CBS employee who sits there watching for when our news videos comes out and then hits upload. Thank you very much for keeping us on our toes. I'm not gonna lie, this is all fun. So since then, the internet, as is well known for its calm and measured responses to everything, uh, went nuts. And what I mean is that you, we've had a vast, vast reaction to the idea of James T. Kirk being brought into Star Trek Strange New Worlds. We have had the absolutely glorious, oh my God, I'm so excited, I'm so excited responses to the, how many times has Kirk been fired this time, you've ruined Star Trek, blah, 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 blah. This one has thrown me for a bit of a loop, I'm not gonna lie. You see, once Star Trek Strange New Worlds was initially announced, the question of are they bringing Kirk into it was brought up straight away. So my initial reaction is, is this them getting ahead of the curve? Like we know Kirk is gonna be in the show at some point, are they just saying, right, let's do it right at the beginning? I reckon, and it's a, it's a thought over here at Trek Culture Towers, that they confirmed the identity of the character because of this leaked footage yesterday. I don't think we would have got it this early otherwise because he's only appearing in season two. Now that's what they've confirmed. We might get a surprise appearance in season one, but they've said season two character, James T. Kirk. Let's say that this is gonna take place post Star Trek Discovery. In 2258, Discovery goes through the wormhole into the future. That leaves a period of 2258 until 2265, which is when Kirk takes command of the USS Enterprise. However, the footage shows Kirk in a captain's uniform. So that does seriously narrow it down somewhat. Kirk is born 2233 in Iowa. He then enters the academy in 2252. Now I have to check my dates here because there's, there, there's a lot going on at this time. It was 2246, he was on the Tarsus IV colony and witnessed the massacre by Kodos the Executioner, but it's 2252, he enters Starfleet Academy. If you've watched the episode Shore Leave from the original series recently, you would know a little bit about his time in the Academy. We know that he was bullied horrendously by Finnegan, who is another interesting Irish depiction in Star Trek's history. Oh, Miles O'Brien, how you have given us so much forgiveness for everything. But we also met one of his first loves, Ruth. Now, in an excised line of dialogue, Ruth states that 15 years pre previous to the events of Shore Leave, Kirk left her to go on his star cruise. That would put it around 2252, 2253. So that then raises the question of how long was he actually in the academy for? Officially, he graduates 2255, right? So that's still three years before our assumed period of Star Trek Strange New Worlds. Okay, we know from the Kelvin universe, he rises to the rank of captain fairly quickly, but actually that tracks in the prime universe as well. He rose through the ranks very, very quickly. He had already served aboard the USS Republic with Jack Finney in the early 2250s, but 2255 is when he's posted on the USS Farragut under Captain Garavik. 2257, the year before Discovery warps into the future, the incident with the cloud creature takes place that results in the deaths of 200 crew of the Farragut, including Captain Garavik. We know that Kirk blamed himself completely for this while the ship's XO said he was a perfect officer who did the best that he could. Then, 
strangely little is known about the years between that event and taking command of the Enterprise. Now, according to the very first official tie-in piece of media to Star Trek, which was The Making of Star Trek, published in 1968, that lists the fact that Kirk had a command previous to the Enterprise. It doesn't name it, but it does say that it was a destroyer-class vessel. That would allow for the fact that Kirk is in captain's bars in this footage. So, it's actually not so shocking that we might have a Captain Kirk at the same time that Captain Pike is still serving in Starfleet before he goes on to become fleet captain. Not to disregard that, that book, but this is an obscure piece of media that it's not often cited. It's not to say that it can't be, nor that it is not a genuine piece of reference here. It is a slight bit of a stretch, I, I won't lie, but hey look, we have the entirety of beta canon to play with, so everything is a stretch, everything is fair game. There is another issue. In the leaked footage, Captain Kirk is standing beside La'an Noonien Singh. Akiva Goldsman confirmed that La'an Noonien Singh and, by the way, her brother who has been cast, will have a relation to Khan Noonien Singh. Now this is where we start to get a bit headachey because we, we know Spock is serving aboard the Enterprise. We now know he's going to be serving with La'an Noonien Singh. We now know that La'an Noonien Singh is going to be at least acquainted with James T. Kirk. So, what does this mean by the events of Space Seed, where Kirk and Spock meet Khan Noonien Singh for the first time? Akiva Goldsman recently said that they will do everything that they can to stick to canon with an asterisk. They said that basically they're not going to be slaves to it. So look, that could mean anything. That could mean that, oh no, we're going to be absolutely like, you know, Tiberius might mean Tiberius's, you know, grand, we're still sticking to canon. We could have James R. Kirk. We could have anything. We could completely rewrite all of Star Trek history, start with a blank slate, no one's canon, Kirk doesn't exist, who is Christine Chapel? none of this happens. Probably not what's going to happen. But there is, of course, the time-honoured possibility of alternate reality, where they can do whatever the heck they like. This is a piece of news that has completely bamboozled and confustigated the fan base because when is this set? Where is this set? What's going on? Ow, my head. That's okay. That's why we like these kind of videos. Now, we also mentioned in yesterday's news that the cast pushed for the inclusion of a large event in Star Trek history which hadn't been shown on screen before. Now that Kirk is confirmed to be appearing, one wonders if this narrows that list down a little bit as to the possibilities. And to be honest, I think that this puts more weight behind the Axonar theory. James Kirk was awarded a Medal of Peace for his actions at Axanar. Now, Axanar occurred in 2251, which would be prior to our assumed timeline of Strange New Worlds, but it is an event that features Kirk anyway. He wasn't captain at the time, but it does feature Kirk. Although we don't know if Pike was in any way involved, a couple of different versions of the story have Axanar as a smaller scale battle with only two ships facing off against each other, so it's possible that Pike wasn't there. It still is a defining moment in Star Trek's history. Of course, there is the Klingon War established by Star Trek Discovery, so what was Kirk up to at that time? Did the Farragut serve during the Klingon War? Very possible. Hey, he was assigned to that ship at the time. Quite frankly, we don't know. We are excited because that's the thing with a prequel. There are so many different examples of events in history that could take place, that could be covered, and quite frankly, they can do, well, they own the franchise, they can do whatever the heck they like with it. So what is it that you would like to see? Now that we know that Paul Wesley has joined Starfleet as James T. Kirk, what would you like to see him doing in the role? Now, one last thing before we go. When this news broke yesterday, Paul Wesley on Twitter shared a fairly heartwarming story. He said that 
He is not a believer in fate by any means, but after he was cast, he found himself on a plane with William Shatner. Apparently, it was entirely by chance, entirely accidental, and he found this as basically the planets aligning that you would have two Kirks standing or sitting side by side. And I too am not a believer in fate, but hey, look, I can see why he believed fate in that one. I just thought it was quite a nice story. What is your reaction? Are you absolutely flipping out and enraging that they would bring this character in so early? Are you delighted to see James T. Kirk in live action played by the wonderful vampire Stefan Salvatore? What do you think? Let us know in the comments below. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And remember, you can catch us over on Twitter at Trek Culture, and you can catch myself at Sean Ferrick on Twitter as well. Now, whatever you do for the next three or four hours until the next news drops, you look after yourself. Remember, stay safe. And to my friends in Ukraine, please, please, I hope everything is well. I hope you are okay. Live long and prosper, everyone. I will see you probably sooner than I expect. Thanks very much.